The book Phasma was released this past weekend. Author Delilah Dawson tweeted a day before it hit shelves that she had three goals in mind while writing the story. She wanted to delight veteran Star Wars fans, she wanted to make sure not to exclude new fans, and she wanted to make us love Phasma. She also fully admits that after what happened on Starkiller Base, that final goal was going to take some extra work. I just finished the book and I'm here to throw in my two cents on whether or not she achieved her goals, and overall whether or not the book is worth your time and money, and I will be keeping the discussion spoiler free. I don't like to waste anyone's time, so if you're just here for a short yes or no, the answer is definitely yes. It's great through and through. Phasma's backstory is intriguing and exciting, and Dawson somehow perfectly balanced revelation with mystery. Phasma is one of those characters in The Force Awakens that we know the least about. Similar to Boba Fett, I think part of the initial allure is that air of mystery. By the end of the story, I felt like I understood her, but she's still someone that isn't just an open book. She's an unpredictable element within the First Order, and despite how quickly she threw in the towel on Starkiller Base, I'm afraid of her and what she might do in The Last Jedi. So let's go ahead and tackle Delilah Dawson's last goal. Did she successfully make me love Phasma? To be clear, I don't think she means she wants us to love and root for the character that is Phasma, but more to enjoy her as a villain, to fear her and be excited when she's on screen. Yes, I think the story was a success in that regard, but I don't love her in the way that I think she would be fun to hang out with. I completely understand why she lowered the shields on Starkiller Base, and I know a lot of people had complaints about that, and I'm glad we have a satisfying reason, but I'm far happier that Phasma is shown to be a terrifying force in the First Order. She's a bit of a wild card that can do some serious damage to our heroes, and I hope The Last Jedi lives up to what we were shown in this book. While we're discussing Stormtroopers with cool armor, I need to talk about Cardinal. He's a new character to the universe and a rival to Phasma. His armor is red, and he is, at least to me, the most relatable person in the First Order. We've had quite a few stories in the new canon told from an Imperial perspective to remind us that there are good and bad people on both sides of the Galactic Civil War. Cardinal is, I think, the first character to serve that purpose in the First Order, traitors not included. You will hear nothing but excitement from me if he pops up in future stories. Most of Phasma's story is told to Cardinal as he interrogates a resistance spy named Vi Moratti. She's instantly relatable as well, and her chemistry with Cardinal was a fun, occasional break from the more bleak story on Phasma's homeworld of Parnassos. That new setting is very cool, and it's basically like a Mad Max world adapted for Star Wars. Lots of warrior tribes competing for resources. It makes sense for the character, and it's just downright fun and exciting. Okay, let's wrap this up by addressing Delilah Dawson's other two goals, to write a book that both hardcore and brand new Star Wars fans could enjoy. I can only really speak for the hardcore fans, but I figure that's my subscriber base anyway. If you couldn't tell already, yes, I thought this book was awesome. It's got fun characters, aliens, droids, weird planets, and all the things we expect from Star Wars. But it's also just a well-told story that raises the stakes and the tension until it bursts. I found myself being nervous about even the side characters at pretty much every turn. I found myself expecting the worst and then being sad if it happened or relieved if it didn't. In that way, I would assume even the most casual Star Wars fan would still enjoy the book, but I think at least seeing The Force Awakens is a prerequisite. There are, of course, easter eggs and references for fans like me to pick apart, but they don't go so far as to exclude anyone that might be taking their first steps into Star Wars outside the movies. I'm very excited about this book and what it might mean for Phasma in The Last Jedi. I think with this book and the Phasma comic, Lucasfilm is making a big push for fans to be ready for a bigger, badder version of Phasma than we saw in The Force Awakens. I think she'll be coming back for revenge in a big way in the near future, and I'm glad I took the time to read about her past. If you're still on the fence about spending your money, well hey, maybe you'd like to get the audiobook for free. The Phasma audiobook is out now, and you can get it for free by clicking on the link in the description or by going to www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. If you sign up for a trial, you'll get a credit for one free book, and you can use it on Phasma, or a number of other Star Wars books, or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. 
If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to see new Star Wars videos every single day, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.